I'm going to encourage you to go ahead and be tapping during the intro, either collarbone or tapping through different points, whatever feels comfortable for you. I am recording this during Mental Health Awareness Month. And during this month, you might hear statistics like one in five people struggle with mental illness. And I'd like you to reconsider that. Mental health is a spectrum. Like you can see on this uh, graphic from my friends at Same Here Global. And we're all on the spectrum from absolute health to really awful illness. It's the same with physical illness. So if we say that only one in five people struggle with mental illness, then many of us will go, okay, I'm not that one in five, so I don't have to worry about it. And I don't have to take care of my mental well being, and I don't need to look for help. What if we thought about that with physical illness? One in five people have difficulty with physical illness. And so if I feel I've got uh, some ailment coming on and I'm not in optimal well being, I might decide, well, but I'm not that one in five who struggles, so I don't need to get help. There are consequences to that. So consider that five in five people are on this spectrum. And sometimes we're higher up the spectrum, just like with physical illness. Sometimes people are far enough up that spectrum that they have to go into the hospital or get medication or different things like that. And all of us find ourselves on that spectrum at certain points. Very rarely are we at perfect optimal health, physically or emotionally. And I've been thinking about doing a video on mental illness stigma for some time. And I think one of the reasons I resisted it was uh, I'm a little ashamed to admit that I've been a little ashamed to admit that I've had my own struggles. And I am much better off since I learned tapping. I look back at the time before that. And while I did fine, I'm low enough down the spectrum that appear normal most of the time. And there were times where it was a little more challenging. And I'm not here to sell tapping as the solution to this. I'm just saying, I found something that has been very beneficial for me in terms of my overall mental health upkeep. And just like we have physical upkeep, it's good for us to have a healthy diet. It's good for us to exercise. There are things we can do to take care of our mental health and not wait until we get a diagnosis of a disorder. And we may be afraid of even looking for that. We may be so insistent upon saying that we're fine because there is this stigma about mental health or rather mental illness. You know, at a certain point along the spectrum, we may label someone as mentally ill. We don't do the same thing with physical illness. It's like, oh, at a certain point, now this person is a physically ill person. They're part of the physically ill, and there's all of this stigma and shame around that. It's a pretty normal thing, and we need to have that normalcy around talking about our mental health so that we can have open conversations and take care of it because we deserve to be in optimal well-being. And when we're in that place, we are better able to share our gifts and talents and make the world a better place. And it just feels better. So let's, uh, let's do some tapping around some of that stuff that comes up around addressing mental health. So taking full responsibility for your own well-being. Even though part of me wants to avoid this subject, I choose to love and accept myself. Even though part of me wants to avoid the topic of mental health, I choose to love and honor myself. Even though part of me doesn't want to talk about mental health. It's not an issue I need to deal with. That's for the one in five mentally ill people. And so I'll just struggle with whatever's going on. Whatever stress I might be feeling. 
that's for someone else to get help with. And even though I don't even want to talk about mental health, I choose to deeply and completely love, honor, and accept myself. And maybe anyone else involved in this. All this resistance to talking about mental health. All this resistance to looking at my own mental health. All this resistance to seeing where I might be on the spectrum. And we're all on the spectrum. And we're at different places on different days. And I might try to convince myself I'm far enough down the spectrum that I don't have to think about it. And it's not because I'm bad or stupid. It's because I have all this programming about the stigma of mental health. And if you even talk about it, if there's even a suggestion that you might be struggling with it, there's something wrong with you. So I hide my feelings. I hide my struggles. And I just deal with it. Some days better than others. And I might be kidding myself about how well I'm dealing with it. And I love and appreciate those parts of me that might resist looking at this as a way of trying to protect myself, as a way of trying to protect my ego because I like to think I'm pretty cool. And there's nothing cool about mental illness. That's what I tell myself. I might be surprised to find out that some of the people who I think are super cool are dealing with their own struggles. I choose to have the freedom to deal with it. I choose to feel the freedom to talk about it. I choose to feel the freedom to get help because I deserve optimal well being. I'm clearing this resistance. I'm clearing this fear of being labeled. I'm clearing any embarrassment. I'm clearing any shame. All this shame about my struggles. All these reasons why it doesn't feel safe. to look at where I'm at on the spectrum and to see whether I need help or not. I do this with my physical well-being. I know that sometimes I can move up that scale and sometimes I desperately need help. And if I can notice that I'm moving up the scale, I can do things to prevent that. And hopefully I'm already doing things 
to get me at the thriving end of the scale? I choose to do that with my mental health. Part of that might be tapping. Part of that is allowing myself the freedom to find whatever resources might help me It might be medication. It might be counseling. It might be meditation. It might be long walks in nature. There are a lot of things I can do to enhance my mental well being. to improve my emotional health. And I choose to know that it's okay to talk about that. People talk about what they do for their physical well-being. People will brag about how they go to the gym. What if we bragged about the things we did for our emotional well-being? What if it became normal to talk about being mentally healthy and it felt safe to talk about when we were struggling so that we could get the support we need? I choose to do this. I choose to remember that wherever I might be on that scale, I am still a magnificent child of the universe, worthy and deserving of the best this world has to offer. I am awesome. And no diagnosis takes away from that. It just shows what I need to deal with at the moment. Even if it's a very long moment. I'm awesome. Even when I have a cold, I'm an awesome person who might need some help. <laughs> Same with things like anxiety. Or whatever else I might be struggling with. I'm an awesome person who deserves optimal well-being. I choose to feel awesome about myself so that it feels safe to get the help I need. And it's always possible that as I allow myself to be honest about what's going on for me, I might be throwing a lifesaver to somebody else. because other people are struggling too. And they're afraid to say anything. Five in five people are somewhere on the scale. I choose to move up the scale towards thriving. And I choose to help others do the same. I'm allowing myself to love myself right where I am. And I'm allowing myself to do what I can do to feel better and better in body, 
mind and spirit. Take a deep breath. Now, as we allow ourselves to make it normal and take away the stigma, we all have that freedom to talk about it and to get healthier. And that's good for all of us. So thank you for doing that. <laughs>